Hey, thanks for joining us at Connection Point Church. You know, we would love for you to stay connected and a simple way for you to do that is to subscribe so that each week you can get notified when new content goes live. We'd also love to keep in touch with you throughout the week and the best way to do this is through our Connection Point Facebook page. Now with all that being said, let's go to this week's message with our lead pastor, Zach Maddox. Good morning, Connection Point. So glad you've joined us this morning as we wrap up our Live Whole series. I hope that you're gathering together in houses uh, for these house church Sundays that we're in. Uh, it is important that we fellowship as believers. It's been great to see uh, everybody uh, beginning to gather in small groups and, and uh, continuing to, to come back together. Uh, not just online, uh, but in person as well, and we want to continue to encourage that. As we wrap up the series on, on Live Whole today, uh, Shelly and I thought it important to kind of go back to where we started, where we both opened with, here's a bit where we're going, the opportunity we have in Scripture, this tension of things that can be passed on through the generations, but the opportunity we have to be new creatures, new creations in Christ. But that part of that Although there's this immediate change that happens as the Holy Spirit indwells us, as we surrender our lives to Jesus, there's also this, this transformation that occurs. It's called sanctification from glory to glory that the Holy Spirit is ever shaping Christ in us. And so it's important we partner with the Holy Spirit in that process. And, and so I've been dialoguing with uh, several individuals about uh, Dr. Caroline Leaf's material on what it looks like to partner with the Lord. Uh, and I had shared at some point, you know, I don't necessarily agree with everything that uh, Dr. Leaf shares, um, but what I appreciate about what she does share as a spirit-filled believer and a, a, a biological neuroscientist that she is able to explain things in ways um, that maybe another person, another believer cannot because of her knowledge of how the Lord um, works in us and works these things through us. And, and so what we thought we'd do this morning is simply to walk through that process of how do we partner with the Holy Spirit? As he brings things to the surface, how do we deal with those things? Because that's really the point of the series, that we can be made whole in Christ. And it's the work of the Holy Spirit in us that allows that to happen. So that's what I want to do. I don't like to focus on what I, I don't agree with because then that becomes our focus and that leads us on the wrong road. What I like to do is focus on, here's where I know there is some truth that we can grab a hold of and apply to our lives. Because uh, it's really easy to focus on, on the disagreements. And I feel like our culture pushes that. And I'd like to push back on that to say, let's focus on where we know is truth that we can partner with and go down that road. So that's what we want to do this morning. Uh, I want to reinforce, here are some of those scriptures that I feel like are so important for us. 2 Corinthians 10.5, that we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Think about that, take every thought captive. We've got to destroy those arguments and opinions that the, the enemy of our soul um, the one who, who speaks lies over our life, how do we tear those down and build up the truth of God and God's word in our life? That's what we want to go after. Uh, we were, so in our small group this last week that we're in, we had met on Wednesday evening and we're talking through uh, some of the emotionally healthy day-by-day -day content. So we're going through that devotional together and great things coming out of that conversation. And one of the individuals in our small group, we're referring to, to another pastor who had said, you know, the person who talks to you most is actually you. This whole idea of self-talk. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've thought much about that. That's actually a work of the Lord in our lives for the Holy Spirit to bring things to the surface that we can deal with. But the challenge is the enemy uses that too, and we call that the battleground of our mind. Uh, we talked about that in the first Sunday of the series. And so it's really, really important that we understand the enemy speaks lies over us, and so the God then says, but here's the truth about you. You as a child of God, and that's what we want to live in. And, and so that's what we want to talk about this morning and focus on what's the process of tearing down lies and living and walking in the truth. That we, we talk about uh, that verse in Deuteronomy, that there is a way before us, the way of life or the way of death, and we want you to choose life. Um, Paul writes in Philippians 3, so a couple of other verses here. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. So we want to forget about the past. We want to let go of those former things. And then he shares in Romans 12, and this is our anchor verse this morning, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Mm -hmm. So what we want to focus on today is how do we engage in that process? How can the Lord renew our minds? How can we be transformed? 
That's really the question we want answered out of this series. How do we destroy unhealthy arguments in the battleground of our mind? How do we take thoughts captive? How do we forget the past and look forward to what lies ahead? How can we be transformed by the renewing of our minds? Those are the questions we want answered in this series. Uh, so Shelly and I, as, as we were talking about this in the last couple of days, uh, we've actually been operating in this for a little while. I've uh, been using some of those processes in pastoral care and counseling. We've applied those uh, truths to our lives. And so what we just want to share with you this morning is what that process looks like and actually guide you through the beginning part of that process together. So we want you to do this in your, your houses this morning. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, I'm going to task you with go find something to write on, be that a journal or a piece of paper, and find something to write with. So go do that. Maybe I should go get a drink or something in the meantime, but seriously, <laughs> I need you to go get something to write on, and I want you to find something to write with, because I want us to go through this process together uh, so that you can begin to tear down the lies of the enemy in your life and start to build up God's truth, mm -hmm. his word in your life. That's what we're going after today. That, that's exactly what it is. Maybe mm -hmm. fill the air a little bit. So seriously, go get something to write on. Go get something to write with. Anything that you want to say about that is before we get into that process? Well, I feel like I really locked in on um, the teachings of Dr. Carolyn Leaf. And I think uh, the first thing that really caught my attention is that she's talking about the brain. And up to that point, I really hadn't done any reading or research on the actual brain and how it works and the intricacies and, and how things are, you know, how you're processing. And so, you know, we go to the dentist like every six months, you know, so it's like you can have experiences that make it so that you're okay to talk about things, but I don't go to a neurologist. I'm not engaged in conversation about my brain and all that it's doing. And so it was very interesting to me to have a believer talking to me about God and my brain and that God created my brain and that God has a purpose for every function in my brain. So what I felt like she was doing was saying, hey, you need to elevate the creator of all of this. Hmm. And you need to recognize that God is, he has a plan. And so if you'll partner more with him and think about what's actually going on in your brain, you're going to find victory. You're going to find freedom. And so for me, it gave such strength to, you know, key verses that I knew to cling to, but I could, I could understand how that was working in my brain. And I felt like I could partner with the work of the Holy Spirit. And that understanding just gave me a lot of courage to really press in on some different things. That's good. All right. So I trust you've got a journal or you got a piece of paper. So we're going to go ahead and start walking through the process. The, the first process that we're entering into is one of gathering, okay? So the, and this is really just recognizing what is the Holy Spirit trying to speak to my heart, speak to my life, to show me where it is that uh, uh, the Lord is at work. Uh, that's the first thing. So you got to gather. Um, that we have this promise in Scripture that the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. We see this in John chapter 16, verse 13. The Holy Spirit is going to bring things to the surface that the Lord wants to deal with. Uh, if you're working through the Emotionally Healthy uh, Spirituality day by day in uh, this summer, uh, I trust that you are. It's a, it's a great pairing with allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives because what we're really going after here, here's the whole process. It's one of repentance and forgiveness and applying God's word to your life. That's really all this is. And because repenting, again, I've talked a lot about this, the Greek word metanoia, which means change your mind. That, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to allow the Lord to transform our minds. That's what repentance is. And then seeking his forgiveness of those things in our life that we've allowed to the enemy to speak over our lives, that we then push back with God's word. Okay? So the first thing is gathering. The Holy Spirit's going to bring to the surface. So in uh, the devotional that uh, you're working through in day four, these are great questions for gathering. So what I want you to think about right now in this moment, so we're going to just take a couple of moments, a couple of minutes for each one of these, because I want you to do this right now so you can begin to apply this truth to your life. Think about right now, what are you angry about? What are you sad about? What are you afraid of? What things are upsetting or worrying you today? So go ahead, take a minute or two, write, write something down. We're going to give you a, a minute in my... 
creative arts pastor, Pastor Andrew, is going to hate that I'm going to leave silence for a minute online. <laughs> so what are you angry about? What are you sad about? What are you afraid of? What things are upsetting or worrying you today? You've got to identify it. Isn't it crazy that silence is awkward in our culture? We always have to fill it with noise. But hopefully you did take a minute to just begin to identify what are those things that you're anxious about, worried about, angry about. Um, so I'm going to have Shelly talk a little bit about, so um, personally, we started going through this really at the beginning of the year. And what does this process look like? How do we partner with the Holy Spirit? So she's going to share from her journal, and I'm just going to share some more general ideas or thoughts and maybe things that you're dealing with just to kind of help lead you and guide you through this process. But hopefully you've identified something, but you want to go ahead and share a bit of what, what you were working through at the beginning of the year. Yeah, and I, I do want to say it's not that we weren't trying to renew our minds all along mm -hmm. as believers, mm -hmm. but when we were introduced to this specific process, then we wanted to try it out and give it our very best effort and see if this was a very useful tool in partnering with the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes it, it, when we have a thought, you know, like Zach just asked you to think about what are you angry about? What are, you know, our, I think our quick response is to say, oh, I, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to focus on negative things. But the Lord in his good leadership wants to say, let's think about that for long enough to get it out of you and be free of that. And I was thinking about a weed. If you go in your yard and you just pick out the weed without digging out the root, well, guess what? The weed comes back and the weed comes back. And so this has been a powerful tool to say, I want to get this thought out of my brain at the root. Does that make sense? I'm feeling like instead of just touching it with the scripture, we are rooting it out with scripture and with the work of the Holy Spirit. So it's important, the first one, and I, done, I followed this in my journal, to name it and define it, to really think about it and to name it. So I actually made a list of several things, and then I chose the one that kind of maybe brought more emotion than some others, because I felt like, well, that's kind of a deep root right there, so I want to get that one. And so what I landed on was I'm not capable. Um, and so just trying to think about I can name that, but then I had to go through a process of, well, where did that come from? And what does that mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, other ones, you know, I was thinking about the, the challenges of COVID and, and people maybe out of work for a while. Uh, one of those could have been, well, I'm worried about our family's finances. Mm -hmm. That's a real worry. But at the same time, God's word has things to say about that. Um, think about the challenges facing in our society right now. I talked a little bit about, uh, you know, the African-American community right now. It is, it is struggling, and rightly so. And it's what, are we getting, what are we doing about that? But in, in conversations, especially this past week, and talking with, uh, there's fear there. And, and so what does the Lord, <clears throat> what does God's word have to say about that? That's what we want to get at. But you need to drive at what, is, what are you angry about? What are you upset at? And then the second point to that, so where you go with that is the focused reflection. So once you've identified, so that's why it only takes like a minute or two. You can usually pretty quickly identify if you just pause for a moment, here's what it is, and now reflect on that. Where did this come from? You need to figure that out. Where is this from? <clears throat> Where did it come from? Uh, I know we were talking about that this morning with what you were had, mm -hmm. had identified. And for me, it was important for me to, to process that my brain has been building thoughts from birth, maybe even before, uh, but just that you're constantly building thought in your brain. And so if I were to go back to, well, what is the root of I'm not capable, then I can think back to my childhood and think back to times where I felt like I wasn't capable or I wasn't good enough at something. Um, you know, then thinking about how thoughts build and build and build, you know, the last couple of years, you know, we had really faced some hard times that led me to have a, a repetitive thought, I'm not capable. 
I'm just, I am not capable of doing this or that. And that brought negative emotion in my life. But as I really was trying to say, Lord, help me to feel capable, then I found scriptures to help me to, you know, tear down the negative thought, but mm -hmm. to build on the good thought that I needed to have to replace that negative thought. And so I landed on um, two key scriptures, you know, mostly because I just needed truth and I needed it to be very pointed and accurate to what I was thinking about. Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinks within himself, so he is. So if I'm thinking that, well, then that's what I've got. That's what I'm dealing with. Ecclesiastes 2, 26, for to a person who is good in his sight, he has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. And so I made that my focus to say, I need to stop thinking of myself as not capable or I can't do this. I can do this. And the Holy Spirit was able to come in and say, you're right. In this case, with this negative thought, it was actually good for me to recognize I'm not capable. Why? Because I'm not capable of doing all the things that I'm setting out to do. And the Holy Spirit was quick to remind me to say, that's why I'm here. So more reliance on me, the Holy Spirit in my life, and that just washed over me in just the right way. It's what I needed. And I was trying to partner with the Holy Spirit, but to just be able to say, I surrender every effort I could possibly have. And I, do, I wanna rely on the Holy Spirit. And I'm not gonna let the circumstances and the opinions and the voices around me to determine what I am and what I'm not capable of doing. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm gonna strive and I'm gonna do my best. And I'm gonna seek to honor the Lord in my efforts. And that's it, <laughs> that's it, that's all I can do. And that's where I can be held accountable between the Lord and I. And so that was an awesome process to partner with the Lord to say, Lord, I want to be capable with your help, with your strength, with your scripture, with the renewing of my mind. And to be perfectly honest, like this was in January, there's not any emotion to I'm not capable. I don't have a negative emotion that goes with that anymore. Praise the Lord. Like I really just have allowed the Lord to truly root that out of my life and build on the positive thinking. And that, so that's part of that, that step two. So step one is gathering what is it that I'm angry about, upset about, worried about. The second part is, and where'd that come from? But then part of that is, okay, but, but Lord, what does your word have to say about that? Mm -hmm. And thanks to internet today, so you don't have to be a Bible student to figure this out. I mean, just search, you know, worry in scripture. Um, or you could even, so in, in the example I gave, you know, I'm worried about my family's finances. So what does, what does God's word say? You can, you can easily search that. So a scripture that, that you could reflect on is Philippians 4, 19. My God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So you've got to start living in the truth. That's really what we're going after here. Don't live in the lies, live in the truth. That's how we become whole. And uh, so part of that process, and this is why I had you get a journal and paper, is writing these things down because it helps provide clarity to what you've been thinking. So I was going to have Shelly share a little bit of what that process looks like. I would even, I would discourage just a linear writing out, although that's part of what you can do, but actually graphically try to figure that out. Create a bit of a mind mapping of, of here's what I'm dealing with, here are the lies, but here's the truth, and start living in, in those things. So do you want to share a little bit of what that is? Sure. So uh, on my mind map, um, I wrote my name, and then on the left-hand side, I chose to try to write out any negative thought that came to my mind. And then on the right-hand side, I wrote the positive things in my life, which also I was thinking about like the blessings and where I can see God's activity in my life. And so on the, I started on the negative and it's just true of my brain. I tend to think quickly on the negative and I'm trying to change that. I want to think more quickly on the positive. And so started out writing things down and, um, you know, counteracting that almost with a positive. So at birth or like two weeks after I almost died. So I wrote that down. Like I'm just trying to go what, back to the beginning. And so I, I almost died. So the positive is I lived. So, I mean, I really just tried to break it down. Um, I'll say it's a positive. Oh, thank you. <laughs> as long as you think it's important, I'll, I'll take that. Um, 
But, you know, I moved around a lot, which was something, sometimes that was a negative, but the positive is I moved around a lot. I've, I have awesome memories of living in different places and having a very wide friendship base, you know, so that's a positive in my life. Um, just different things. I, I tried to write down my, my brother, Ryan, had a, a horrible head injury when he was a child, and that really made an impact on my life. Well, that happened, I think, when he was around 10, but when he was 15, God miraculously healed him. Well, that's a positive. I can't hold on to the negativity of his injury. I can focus on the positive that God miraculously healed my brother. Mm -hmm. So as I began to do this, it's like, I'm not going to show you this because of, because of technology, then this becomes a permanent thing and it's mine. So <laughs> on the left hand side, the negative, there's several things, but from half the page into the entire next page is full of positive. It's full of blessing. And I started writing larger and bigger and exclamation points because the Lord was able to say, look at all the good. We are, you are not designed to focus on the bad. And Dr. Carolyn Leaf has pointed that out. We are not designed to live in the negative. We're designed to live in the positive because that's where we recognize the activity of the Lord. He's trying to show us his good favor, his goodness, his mercy, his grace on our lives. And as I did this activity of writing it down, I was pleasantly surprised to see that's all true. God wants me to think about this. And he was quick to bring the positive to my mind and I could just write it all down. That's good. And so, yeah, the writing part is really important. I was thinking about the, the concept of I'm worried about my family's finances, if that's where you find yourself. You know, part of that is then I would encourage you as you land on and reflect on the scripture. So the scripture of my God will supply every need of yours. Meditate on that. Okay, notice he says here, needs not wants. And maybe that's where the struggle is. So as you start to write and map, you'll start to identify that's a bit of where I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. And and realizing that uh, the Lord's truth is truth, but we need to live in that truth and not create our own as a part of that process. And then what you do as a part of that, so once you've gathered it, you've identified where that come from, and but here's the lie, but here's the truth I'm going to live in. Then you start to live in that truth. So you revisit that truth and you do it daily. Uh, so I wrote down the, the truth connected to, to the example I've given that God, I thank you. I do not need to be worried about tomorrow. I thank you that you are willing and able to supply for my needs. Forgive me for being worried about my financial future. So there is this, Lord, I'm seeking your forgiveness here because uh, that's part of the repentance and forgiveness cycle. I put my trust in you today. Amen. So that that's what you're then revisiting. You're building up God's truth in your life. And it's really his word. I don't know if you want to explain a bit of what that looked like in yours. Well, I tried to start January 1. And so by January 7th, my journal entry is now, this is how I'm going to spend, you know, like um, Dr. Carolyn Leaf would say seven minutes. It takes at least seven minutes a day of thinking the positive thought to rebuild that positive brain activity. And so January 7th, my, uh, my journal entry is, on my own, I am not enough, but as I abide, I will be all that I need to be. As I seek you, you give me knowledge, wisdom, and joy. For as he thinks within himself, so he is. Proverbs 23, 7. As a person is good in his sight, he has given knowledge, wisdom, and joy. Ecclesiastes 2, 26. And then my concluding thought was, with God, I am enough. I am capable. And so just each one of those, pausing, praying through that, allowing the Lord to just nurture my good thought, then that's what I came down to. And then just continued that pattern mm -hmm. for the rest of the 21 days. That's good. And then the, the last thing, you know, so you gather, you, you figure out what is the Holy Spirit speaking to my life? What's he bringing to the surface? Where did that come from? Okay, I don't want to live in that lie. I want to live in God's truth. So then you establish that truth and you're revisiting that truth daily. And Shelly mentioned for 21 days because you've got... It, it takes that amount of time to basically deaden and remove what was that lie and to start living in the truth. And then you practice it, that you find a way to reinforce your change of mind, uh, of living in that. That every time that worry comes to your mind, you revisit that statement. Um, I would say there's kind of two spaces to revisit that statement daily, is every morning, as a part of your abiding time, you revisit that statement. And then throughout that day, for the next 21 days, as something comes to your mind, a worry comes to your mind connected to that, immediately, God, you know what? I'm not going to live in that lie. 
I know that you're able to supply for my needs, and I'm going to put my hands in, and, and I'm going to put myself in your hands today and trust in you. Um, so that's the daily practice. And then part of that is I would start living that out. So like an example here, and I'm actually going to give one for yours too because we were talking through that this morning, is uh, as it relates to uh, concerns about your, your financial future. And I've, I've shared this before in, in the church setting. You know, part of the reason we give is to release the fear of not having enough because giving does that. It kills that fear. It kills that lie. Um, so giving releases the hold that worry and fear can have on your life. Um, and part of this comes from Nate as we're working through this year. We're, we're doing kind of a rite of passage year. Is one of the tasks was to give dollars away, you know, to, to experience the joy of giving. And maybe that's the practical of how you start living that out and building that truth into your life. Do you want to talk a little bit about your example? I don't know which example you're referring to. The example of I'm not capable. Can I, oh, can I give you an example? You can give it, I guess. Because <laughs> I was I thinking feel like about I this. need to find it. <laughs> Go ahead and share Well, it. and part of the funny thing is we were talking about this and how this is not like a non-issue now. So we're talking about something in January, but now we're in June. You really can destroy the lies and live in the truth. Um, once we went to remote learning for kids, you know, Shelly's a kindergarten oh. teacher in our area. And, but that lie came up like, I am not capable of teaching kindergartners online. But then as Shelly really walked that out and started living in that truth, she found I am capable. Um, so I just, anyway, so that was an example that came to mind as you, you related to that. How do you apply that to your life? And so that's it. And, and so you walk through that cycle for 21 days, but what uh, uh, research would show, what, what uh, Dr. Leaf points out is you usually have to live in that cycle about three times to actually uh, firmly establish that truth. And so that's what we'd encourage you. So I hope you've taken good notes today. We want you to partner with the Holy Spirit to be transformed and to allow the image of Christ to be formed in you. That's really what we're going after. I'm going to invite the music team to come back and we're going to close in song here in a minute. And in song, reinforce who God is and the way that he wants to bless your life and grow you in his image. That we can take thoughts captive. Here's the last thought. We can take thoughts captive and renew our minds with the Holy Spirit. It's the work of the Holy Spirit to transform us and form us in the image of Christ. And it's the tool of abiding in Jesus and meditating on his word that does that work. That's where we want to go. Uh, I want to as, one more thing before you stop. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. I also want to say, like, with the example that both Zach and I shared, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of emotion to both of those examples. And we are not ignoring that, you know, there are going to be some things in your life that hold a lot of emotion, whether that is an event or a trauma mm. or an abuse. Mm. So we're talking about things that for the most part, me as an individual with the Holy Spirit, I'm able to build on this and I'm able to break down and I'm able to build up and it's all just fine in the confines of my home, just the Lord and I. But we really do recognize that people have deep wounds, deep trauma, abuse, that you may not be able to do this alone mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit. You may need to invite someone else into that sacred space, be it a professional counselor, a doctor, you know, you need to do what you need to do. But understanding that God is good and God is gracious and he's not trying to hurt us. He's trying to heal us. Mm -hmm. And so in the process of healing, and we're okay with that when, you know, like I pour peroxide on my child's wound or put the neosporin on, you know, it kind of stings a little bit, but it needs to happen. Antibiotics need to be there. And so in the healing, caring process, there can be pain, but God wants to rid us of that pain. Mm -hmm. And so if that is you, we would say, Talk to someone, invite yeah. someone into that sacred space so healing can take place. It doesn't mean it's too painful. Let's press it down. Let's just ignore it. No, God says, let's be restored. Let's be renewed. Let's transform from glory to glory to glory. Why? Because he gets the glory for that. And we have a story. We have a testimony of what God is doing in our lives. And if we are resolved that we will not change, we will not go there, then that's just it. We will not change. And God means to partner with us and to change us. And so we feel very strongly about 
what God wants to do in our lives, what we realize it's going to take a little bit more effort on our part to go there, to partner with the Holy Spirit, and to be more mindful of what is in our brains. What have we built in, maybe intentionally or unintentionally? And right now, with everything that's gone on with COVID, with everything that's going on with what I've kind of labeled the war on racism, this is a time where we need to be accountable for what's going on in our minds. Where did it come from? Why is it there? Is it true? Does it align with scripture? And allow the Holy Spirit to do the heavy lifting in our lives to bring us to the place where we are a reflection of the Lord. And that's what we need to be about. If we're supposed to be different, if we're supposed to be unique, then it's going to take the Holy Spirit to bring us to that place. We cannot do it on our own. Praise the Lord, I am more aware of that in my life. And I'm partnering with, with, the, with the Holy Spirit as our whole body of Connection Point. May we be people that say, you know what, I do have this thought in my mind, but it is not God honoring. And I'm going to partner with the Holy Spirit and maybe with a close friend or maybe with a counselor. And I'm going to get to the root of this because I know God wants to get it out of my life. Because we don't. We don't want you living in the lies. We want you living in the truth. And as your pastors, I mean, I already said this before and I'll say it again. We, we don't want you <clears throat> living as a first-year Christian 20 years after you've asked Jesus to be your Lord. That's not right. And so may you partner with him in this process of really a cycle of, of repentance and forgiveness so that you might live whole. Because the good news is Jesus came to set you free. And we want you living in that freedom. Um, so let's go ahead and, and I'll pray and then we'll, we'll close in song. Jesus, we just ask that you would work through each and every person that's listened to this message today, may listen and watch to it, watch it later. I pray, Lord, that you would change them. Lord, from glory to glory, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit form and shape Christ in us, in everyone uh, that's a part of Connection Point Church that, that's listening to this message online, wherever they find themselves today. Holy Spirit, come in. Help them to recognize what it is you're speaking to their hearts. May they begin to identify where that came from, that they might root it out. Lord, and then they may, may they start stepping into your truth. Lord, I, I pray that, that we would be people who walk in your ways. And God, I do pray that we would understand as we close in song that you truly have come to be able to establish your peace in our hearts. Lord, that you've come to display mercy in our lives. And so, Lord, may we live in that. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.